often get asked, what is the difference between a narrative review and a systematic review? Or what is the difference between a narrative review and a scoping review? This is also something I wondered about when I was new to the world of research. And in this video, I'm going to shed some light on this question. Let's first have a look at what a systematic review is and what a scoping review is. A systematic review is done to identify research studies published on a certain topic with the primary aim to recommend best practice on a certain topic and to inform policy. This is a very useful to, type of study to do if there are discrepancies in the way in which a certain practice is performed, but also to recommend new approaches to practice. Another type of review is a scoping review, and those are done to determine the research out there on a certain topic. Scoping reviews do not involve a critical appraisal process like systematic reviews do, but they are also conducted using rigorous and systematic processes. In another video on the Research Masterminds YouTube channel in the Systematic Reviews playlist, um, you'll find that I elaborate on the difference between these two types of reviews. A narrative review, also referred to as a traditional review, summarizes and presents the available research on a topic but generally does not fo um, follow such a rigorous or systematic process as a scoping review or a systematic review will follow. A narrative or traditional review is more biased than a systematic and scoping review as it relies on the author's background knowledge on a topic. Zachary Munn and his colleagues, all of them systematic review experts, alludes to this difference in a very useful article published in 2018. I'll add a link to this article in the description box below this video. They state that scoping reviews are different to narrative reviews in that scoping reviews are informed by a priori protocols, are systematic and often include exhaustive search, searching for information, aim to be transparent and reproducible, include steps to reduce error and increase reliability such as the inclusion of multiple reviewers, and ensure data is extracted and presented in a very structured way. In Table 1 of this article, the difference between the three types of reviews become clear. And here you can see you have the traditional literature reviews, the scoping reviews and systematic reviews all compared to one another. Uh, the a priori protocol is usually present in the scoping reviews and systematic reviews, a Prospero registration is required for the systematic reviews at this stage, but maybe later for scoping reviews as well, but not for traditional or um, narrative reviews. Explicit, transparent, peer-reviewed search strategy, commonly present in scoping reviews and systematic reviews, not necessarily present in traditional or narrative reviews. A standardized data extraction, extraction forms are used in scoping and systematic reviews. Mandatory critical appraisal, not used in scoping and narrative reviews, but it is used in uh, systematic reviews. And then synthesis of findings from individual studies and the generation of a summary of findings table. And that's usually only done in systematic reviews and not, ne not in narrative or scoping reviews. So this is quite a useful table to refer back to if you want to compare the differences between a traditional or narrative review scoping review and a systematic review. So how do you know if an article is a narrative or systematic or scoping review? These three look very different to one another, but I'm going to show you an example of each so you can see the difference for yourself. Here's an example of a narrative review. Now the word narrative review does not always appear in the title, which means that the title may just be ankle injuries in soccer players. Then if you scroll down, the apps, from the abstract, you can already see that this is not a primary study with the typical uh, results, methods, results, you know, conclusion type of sections. And even though there's no uh, subheadings, you know, some abstracts do have subheadings, others are unstructured, you can still clearly see that this is not a primary study. When you just look at the, the abstract. Um, then you have this, it states here it's a narrative review, aims to record the epidemiology of ankle injuries. But even this word narrative review 
may not appear in the abstract. So that means you may have to scroll down to look at the structure of the article. And from the structure, you can see that the typical layout of a primary study or empirical study with the introduction, methods, results, discussion is not present. And here you can see that it takes very much the form of a review. But what is missing here is a method section, which clearly describes how this review has been conducted. So from this, you can deduct that this is most probably a narrative review. Now let me show you how this looks different to a scoping or a systematic review. Now this is a scoping review, which we published a few years ago. And you can see even in the abstract, there's a space for inclusion criteria. The methods are very well elaborated on. And there's a results section here. Now, don't be fooled by the fact that there's headings or maybe the lack of headings. Remember that some abstracts are unstructured without any headings. But from the information in the abstract, you can clearly see that the methods are well el elaborated upon. And there's a clear section which report back on the results from the scoping review. And here's an example of a systematic review. And here in the title, it immediately says it's a systematic review and meta-analysis. But sometimes the word systematic review and meta-analysis or systematic review um, does not uh, appear in the title. And then you again have to look at the abstract. And here again, you can see the methods of this study has been described quite well. And there's a clear section which represents the results. And even if you scroll down, you'll see that the methods are really elaborated on very well, something that is quite different from that narrative review that I just showed you. So this is how you differentiate between a narrative review, scoping review, and a systematic review. Now that you know the difference between a narrative or traditional review, a scoping review, and a systematic review, you are ready to decide if a narrative review is what needs to be done, or if it should be a systematic or scoping review. If you know that you need to do a systematic or scoping review, but you are not sure what the difference is between these two, or if you can't decide what type of systematic review what you want to do, or even if you want to figure out what the difference is between a systematic review and a meta-analysis, have a look at the systematic reviews playlist on the Research Masterminds YouTube channel to get your questions answered. When things sometimes feel a bit overwhelming in this research journey, Know that we are all in it together. Just decide what your next step is and tackle one step at a time. Leave me a comment in the comment box below this video if you have any questions. And let's see how we can help fellow researchers with the same dilemma through getting your question answered. If you found this video helpful, smash the like button. For more useful tips to boost your research experience, subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button below this video. And while you're at it, hit the bell so that you get notified whenever I produce a new video. If you need a solution to a challenge not yet covered on my channel, leave a comment in the box below. See you in the next video.